Next, we're going to scroll back so we see the full screen. And we're going to go ahead and put our pilot holes so that this will be the holes that will line up all the parts and pieces of the scratch pad. I'm going to go ahead and click on the circle tool this time. I'm going to drag the circle and I can just click on it once and drag it over to where I need it to be. And on this one, I'm going to click on the shape. I want the height and width of this one to be 0.25. Width will also, or the height will also be 0.25. And that way I have a small hole. And I'm going to line this up on the top corner here of my scratch pad. I want the cut depth of this to go all the way through the material. So we're going to cut at a full quarter. And there's my hole right here on the preview. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and match that up on the bottom. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'll click on the circle tool. Drag this over, click the shape of it to again 0 0.25, 0 0.25 for the width and the height. I now have that same size and I'm just going to line it up over here on this corner and that way the tool will match up. Finally, I'm going to double click it, I forgot to put the cut and put my cut down to a full one quarter. When I look over to my preview, my plate should have two holes relatively the same. Now I can measure these out and make them pretty close in distance and that way they have a nice aesthetic and look pretty close. I can also measure those out. Now this is going to be a pretty nice plate for me. The last thing I'm going to do is I want to match up this plate to the bottom plate to make sure that the two parts lay over each other perfectly. I'm going to do that by left clicking on the mouse and dragging so that this is all highlighted. I'm going to click on copy and now I'm going to click on over here or somewhere outside of the screen and then I'm going to paste that by clicking on command V. For a Windows user it should be Windows V but that will paste that same design. Now this is all highlighted at one time so I can click on any one of these lines see where I have the two arrows meet click on it and drag this over so that way I know that this is the exact same dimension as my original plate. I'm going to go ahead and line this up to my plate that I'm currently making. It should look something like this. And that way I know that this plate is a direct or an exact copy of the plate that I'm just making. Now from there, I can click on some of the lines, this rectangle here, and click on delete. I'll also highlight this line that I created here, this line here. And now I'm guaranteed that these two circles will perfectly match up to these two circles in depth and that way I can put this plate on top of this plate and they'll work perfectly. Finally, I'm going to want to countersink these circles so that, that my bolt won't show up on the back side. This is kind of a cool way of doing it. I can click on my circle tab one more time. This time I'm going to put my height and width on the shape as, boing, as being 0 0.75, 0 0.75. And when I hit enter, my circle should be a lot larger. I'm going to then center that circle over the other one. Once I have it lined up over my original hole, I'm going to go ahead and right click and look through these different options to where it says send to back. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and what that's going to do is align these two parts so that my original drawing of that hole now matches up to my new drill bit or my new drill face. When I look at my design and zoom in here, I now have a bolt a hole for my bolt and a countersunk area where that bolt will then sit in and be flush with the rest of my piece. There's a nice little detail there to make this uh, a really fancy design. I'm going to do the exact same thing for my bottom bolt. So I'll click on my part, go to shape, hit 0.75 again, 0.75, hit enter, drag my design over so that it's over on top and then send to back. This will bring that first dot forward and the machine will really recognize both. I can then just center that piece just a little bit more and that way it's designed nice and that will be really clean for the design. So here's what I'm looking at now when I look at my preview. I have the top of my front plate. This will be, this will go over the other one. I'm actually looking at the back of my plate and when I put these things together it will all make sense and the bolts will slide through the holes that I've just built here and then they'll sit flush and then this plate will go on, on top of this, which is actually the bottom side of what I'm looking at here.
Next thing I'm going to do is add some graphics and designs to my top plate. And I can do that by clicking on the text. I like this banger design side design. And my name is Dominic, so I'm going to add in Dominic. I can then adjust the setting. Spin this so that it's at 90 degrees. Now I can either rotate this around or I can go to my angle here and just click on 90. And it'll give me a definite 90 on this angle. Now I can CNC mill this, but unfortunately if I do it this way, it's going to cover over some of that bolt. So I'm just going to go ahead and shrink it down just by dragging on the corner. And here is my design for Dominic. And that way my plate will now have Dominic on it. Now I can do this or I'll go ahead and spin it around here. I just think 270 is the exact opposite of 90. So you got 90 and 90 is 270. And that gives me the 90 degrees. And that way I make sure that it's facing this way. Those bolts will definitely line up on the plates that I just had. And it should work out fairly well. Okay, at this point we're ready to load the machine up. Uh, what I've got here is three of the different bolts that come into the or come with your carby. Uh, each one's for a different size, so the thicker my material is, the thicker or the longer bolt I will need to use. But for now, we're going to go ahead and use the blue bolts. And what I've done is I've set up a sacrificial piece of material underneath so that it has a little bit of a gap between my board and the final plate so it doesn't mill all the way through. Now, normally it won't mill all the way through. But um, this is kind of just in case our measurements aren't perfect. Now we'll look on this bottom corner here. It has a little groove that this board will line right up to. Now once I place this in the groove, I'm going to run that line or make sure this edge matches up to my black line at the bottom of the carby so that it's pretty lined up and in that corner nicely. Next I'm going to take the clamp. And this just clamps down the material to my milling surface. And again, that little edge that we were looking at earlier that was in gray is going to match up to the little edge that this piece clamps down to. That's why we couldn't really design in that corner because our clamp was going to be there. Now remember, I've got my piece here at the top that's going to be milled out, so I don't want to put my clamp anywhere on this top piece because that, that tool bit's going to mill right through it. I'm going to go ahead and clamp it down somewhere along the bottom side here so it clamps that top piece down. I'll put my locking nut down, tighten it up, and we should be ready for our milling. I'll make sure everything's snug, close the lid to the carby, and then push play. Once the machine is done carving your project, take the vacuum cleaner and vacuum all dust out of the machine. Unclamp your project, and now you're ready for assembly. Now you're ready to assemble the project. You should have scrap paper, your board, your nameplate, two carriage bolts, and two wing nuts. What you'll do is you'll take the carriage bolts and place them through the holes on your backer. You'll then spin the piece over, take your paper, and put it between the two bolts, put your nameplate on top, and then add your wing nuts. Now, Now have your scratch pad.